Hello, my name is Chuck Hansen, and uh, this topic is uh, one that's very interesting to me, and I, I hope by your attending this webinar, it's going to be interesting for you. The title is CCTV Machine Learning. Artificial intelligence is here. There may be debate on that, but I think you'll be uh, uh, quite pleased when we get into the topic a bit more. I've been very fortunate to be in the industry for as long as I have. I starting back in the 19, early 1980s uh, and now into 2020, so 40 years. I can't believe where the time's gone. If you're at all familiar with Hansen Software or Hansen Information Technologies, well, that's me. I started that business with my brother and my father, sold that in 2007, and tried to retire, but had to be brought back into this. Did a lot of TV inspection in there. Kind of what I cut my teeth on initially was the CCTV project. For the city of Houston. And I know some of you out there, maybe from Austin or San Antonio, still using Hanson, now in for Global, who was just personally bought recently, used some of the Hanson codes for CCTV. That was over 30 years ago. Henry Gregory asked me to help him uh, determine what those codes would be. I went over to the UK and visited a little company called WRC, which uh, uses the uh, 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 TV structure that we have all around the world. And um, decided that wasn't Texan enough, and so we developed our own at that point. Today, we're going to talk about four items. We're going to do a little introduction to the area. We're going to talk about uh, a little bit of the bad news, and believe me, it's pretty bad. We're going to turn it around and talk about some good news on this topic, and then we'll summarize. The topic of AI, machine learning, is already well on its way, and it's really a, a race between a number of agencies and a, lump, a, a number of vendors already that we've seen. And in fact, uh, we see this uh, typical rear view mirror where uh, items are closer than they appear. Uh, and that's artificial intelligence and machine learning. It's already looking to pass us by in a number of cases. And this is something that we can use today. And in fact, through my companies, we're using it almost every day. Uh, 70 years ago, CCTV started in about the 1950s, really to look at obstructions, to, to, to get recordings, and it really has improved from there. But actually, a lot hasn't changed. And it's still stunning that after 70 years, we see this joint that's located up here. We still can't use CCTV to tell us whether that joint is watertight or not. And that's a key thing if we're going to be using this technology to find infiltration. Uh, to know which, which mains to fix and when, and really to prioritize our rehabilitation. We need to know that. We just can't let that go. Same thing goes with cracks. One of the things, even though we've been looking at cracks for 70 years, we still can't tell through a video camera whether a crack is superficial or whether it goes through the pipe. And unfortunately, AI it's not going to tell us that either. And if we take a look at maybe an old video of just how we put these pipes together, how we're actually grouting around the sides for a connection. When we put a TV camera in the inside of the pipe, yet we've grouted on the outside in many cases, that's not going to tell us whether that grout is still there, uh, whether it still can hold that water or not. So the, the basic premise of visual inspection is, is a flawed one. And so if we're just automating something that's already flawed, we know that there's going to be a problem. So we've got to ask the question, is AI going to be able to provide better assessment for defects, including leaks? The answer is probably not. Uh, there are other new technologies that can do that. So we're going to be talking about what AI can deliver for us and what it's delivering today. Again, looking at this concept of finding a leak or assessing things, even if we have a 360 degree um, a film that we can lay that out, uh, it's very, still very difficult to tell if a joint is leaking or not. We're looking at these pipes more than likely without water in them. Uh, we want to do this at a low flow. And unfortunately, this is why CCTV typically misses 80 to 100% of leaking joints. It, it just is going to happen. But machine learning is more than just automating what we see. There are algorithms, there are improvements, there's analyses, there are classifications and data mining that we can do. So machine learning will actually encompass many of these areas. So it's not only coming with AI machine learning, it's already here. 
The thing is, it may, you may be surprised of how, how it is here and how it's already beginning to change how we assess the pipes that we have. So here's the bad news, and it is pretty bad. AI essentially is highlighting the drawbacks of CCTV. This is something we've relied on for all of those years. But the problem with inconsistent, incorrect use of codes, operator bias that we see time and time again, uh, really leads to fixing poor quality defects, possibly even fixing pipes that we shouldn't fix. Even worse, because TV has been used more than likely inappropriately to approve things like cured in place pipe and liners and some of the other trenchless things, we can have some real problems experienced by that. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we take a look at the three common codes that are out there, you know, one category, structural ratings here, we've got a problem in that one five rated defect actually is the same as five one rated defects. If we truly want to get a one through five, we really got to get a handle on what these codes are, are telling us. In the second ca category, operational and maintenance, when we take a look at the typical codes that we have there, we see infiltration. And really, infiltration doesn't belong as an O&M score. These are structural defects. This is where infiltration is coming in. This is a problem we've got to really not only identify where and how many, but the severity of those things. And the last code, and I've only shown a, a, a small clip of this, construction features, really where we look at lateral defects, shouldn't be a construction, it shouldn't be O&M, these are structural areas. And we've got to identify defects at the lateral, not only before we do rehab, but as we'll see in a couple of minutes after. Consultants seeing the problems with a one through five category rating. Uh, have done their best to even change how they've weighted these scores, how to come up with alternative scoring systems. We've had some agencies that have actually done away with CCTV, understanding that TV cannot find or quantify infiltration. This is something, in, in many cases, we just don't want to rely on in the future. The other very surprising thing is leading utilities. Here's an example. Wessex Water, a small utility by UK standards, a huge utility by American standards. Uh, Wessex uh, manages about 35,000 kilometers of sewer main. That's about almost 22,000 miles of pipe. In 2017, Julian Brighton, head of rehab, already was finding using AI, he could be accurate by 92% all of the British calls, 92%. The joke was, if you had manual people looking at the same video, they might be lucky to get 40%. Going through, working with a local university there at Exeter, extracting the frames, pre-processing those, applying the filters, and then finally, classification and identifying the faults. A lot of work has been done, and this is almost three years ago. He's not quite to 100%, but just give Julian time. That's why it's interesting to see some of the articles that come out by industry people that uh, are talking with the TV camera guys. The question is sometimes asked, what if AI produced data that's incorrect? Let's take a look at how three different CCTV operators, for example, rated the same pipe. This is a very famous study that was done back in 2015 uh, by Long Beach Water Department. They looked at operator A rating a pipe and luckily B rated the same way. But then as you look at a time series of these, B not only rating the same pipe, rated it a one, and then rated it a zero, and then again zero, and then operator C would come back and rated it a three. Which one do we trust? Second example, we see A and B both rated it a zero, B a three, then C. So in both cases, in the first two, A and B, the lateral damage was not coded. I could see it, but there was no coding of it. B then, uh, radiant number three, found lateral damage and coded it. But then C couldn't see that as well. So uh, the differences that, 
two or even three people see in the same video, uh, same video is uh, a real problem for the industry. You took a look at uh, scoring individual cracks, for example, the difference between a crack circumferential versus a crack multiple, scoring a one versus a three. You decide, how would you score that? The other thing that we look at is, is just the integrity of coding. We were asked to, to look at a Texas uh, wastewater utility just this year, some of the coding of their joints. And looking at 23,640 feet, three operators came up with a total of 30 defective joints and a known high infiltration area. What that meant was, out of the possible 4,000 joints that were out there, these pipes were perfect. Notice the defect rate at the bottom. That meant 99.2% of these pipes were perfect, but they really weren't. As we look at operator bias that may be in here, here's a slice just looking at PVC pipes. And if we look at operator one, two, and three, and we look at the circle, operator three actually televised 37% of these 9,800 pipes. No defects were recorded. That's a problem. As we take a look at coding of defective taps, here's an example where operator one, two, and three are compared. Operator one televised 31% of the VCP, but only found one defect at a tap. I'm gonna tell you why that's really important here in a few minutes. We were then asked uh, by Midwest uh, City, take a look at some of their videotape. And we saw 690 joint defects, big number. We had to look at 833,000 running through some of the analytics on the cloud. And because of this, 99.3% considered good out of the possible 100,000 joints. What that can do by understating defects at joints, CCTV actually can recommend areas to rehab that are actually the wrong ones. And if you're looking to eliminate something like infiltration, that's gonna be a real issue as you move forward. This was an interesting uh, uh, project that we were asked to look at in California. High infiltration right near the bay. And we actually before reviewed all of the reports as the consultant did in this case and found a manhole that had two overflows. And we did have some recapture of that. So we netted outflows 292,000 gallons. We scheduled a lot of TV based on this and uh, we were looking at the problem, did a lot of recommended rehabilitation on it. But what happened afterwards? Well, we actually came up with six overflows that now netted with zero recovery over 400,000 gallons. And looking at this information out of the 220 possible PACP codes, only 30 codes were used to evaluate the sewers. We're not saying that they were the right codes, but it's by looking at the degree of, of um, forensics on this, uh, it's, a, it's a real challenge to get this right. We're also take, asked to take a look at the benchmarking lateral connections. Here's a case where manual, TV inspection found zero total defective tap connections. Machine-based defective taps accounted for 188. So as we take a look at the total 188 defective out of the 440, it's an issue. this is a real issue by having zero. And if we look at a, a main, and if we don't have the leaks in the main, and, and if the TV comes up and says and tells us, Look, it's not at the connection of the main. It's going to tell us incorrectly that the problem is on the lateral side, which it isn't in this case. It's at the connection. Uh, we just finished a project in, in Florida looking at 33,000 feet. Manual CCTV, five defective taps. Machine intelligence. 324 out of the 429 laterals leaks. These were all pre-CIPP. And we want, as we do lining for these areas, we want to make sure any leak that we find before goes away after we do rehab. So in kind of conclusion for this section, uh, we've always known some of the drawbacks for TV inspection. 
Does AI, CCTV, eliminate these? Unfortunately not. But it does take care of things like different codes used for the same defect, the, using the same code for different defects uh, and different callouts by the same or different operators and the repeatability, very strong. We saw how three operators all had completely different uh, uh, conclusions for these pipes. So those are the four. And if you look at four out of the 21 listed, 20%, not bad. As we take a look at the cost of implementing some of these new AI CCTV, it's, it's a real struggle to justify doing training of individual operators anymore on PACP coding when we know they're going to be challenged anyway. It may be time right now, put that money into AI CCTV instead. A lot of vendors want to do that. I'm not so sure that eliminating those four of the 21 defects of TV, knowing that we have a flawed technology already, not so sure that there's enough business to go around. And I'm certainly not sure whether uh, the VCs that are chasing after uh, this area are gonna be so proud to say, hey, we're the only VC that's, that's investing in these things. So that's the bad news. Whew, that's, that's good, we're done with that. So what's the good news? The good news is AI is taking condition assessment to a whole new level and it's already begun. Not only are we able to locate all tap connections using AI, but we're now using it to find anomalies in cured in place pipe liners. And because we're not having the individuals trained for PACP coding that they're not having to do, we're getting an immediate cost benefit of CCTV. This is what our focus is. If we have defects, are they structural? Are they infiltration related? Are they happening at the main, at the connection, or at the lateral? The biggest benefit right now and why we're being used using AI is using all of the old video that we've had and automatically locating 99.9% .9 of the time the location of that lateral. What does that do? Number one, that gives, that gives us a correct GIS location. We've never had that before. We typically have had GIS locations where we have a centroid to a parcel and we just use the near command to go to the nearest pipe. This is giving us precision-based things that we're gonna need, not only for GIS, but also for CIP reinstatements or restorations. Other thing that it gets is we wanna make sure we're sending a bill out to every one of these things. So this is revenue. The third biggest thing, we wanna be able to allocate GPM leakage to the main or to the lateral. So what we're able to do with AI is establish where the connection is located. But the question that we wanna ask and the question we wanna make sure is answered is the tap connections should not leak more after CIPP than before. How does that happen? Easy. If we're taking a rotating blade and we are opening up and we are recutting holes into that liner, and if we're off a fraction of an inch, we're gonna be making holes in a pipe that may not have had them before. What that means is if we have a baseline leakage rate before we do CIPP, but through poor restorations, we create more holes than we had before, GPM can actually increase, not decrease. So the precision-based lateral, and this is why we wanna make sure that we have no leakage before and that we have no leakage after. This was something interesting. 2011, this line on the left was, was realigned. Notice that water coming out of it though. It's like a little drinking fountain. Coming back three years later, which was the pre-cleaning that I just looked at, water gushing out of it. No one had fixed this pipe. That was in 2014. I got involved to really reassess this pipe in 2016. I saw the same thing. So four years, 10 months, 28 days later, 11 million gallons gone and no call outs from CCTV. Unfortunately, 50 years later, 
we are now finding liners can and do leak. Here's a liner, here's a, a coupon, if you will. We're using a colored dye. And if you'll notice, this colored dye leaking directly through the liner will never be seen by a TV camera, will never be seen, even if slowed down to a frame by frame basis with AI. We need other technologies to do that. Otherwise, this will happen and we'll wonder why. The other thing that we do many times is we see time and time again, TV that's not recording things like pinholes. And there's a big argument between the contractor and the owner. And sometimes we hear the phrase pinholes, they're okay, they're self-healing. No, they're not. So we wanna get these, we wanna get these early and we wanna make sure, do they leak now or do they leak right before expiration of our warranty? And we can see videos that have zero PACP grading. And then evidence like that we have here of poke and hope. This is where we're poking into the side, looking for where the lateral might be. And in this case, we actually had grout that was put in it. And in a couple of these cases, you'll see that grout not working, whether it's dried out or uh, 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 not, not really coming. And we'll just see water infiltrating directly out. I think we'll see some right down here, active infiltration, but grout as well. And we see this on a daily basis. There has to be other things, but TV is not the uh, way to determine the permeability and the water tightness of CIPP. Contractors won't like to hear this, but the owners will, because this is what they're depending on for the next 50 year useful life. And so by combining AI to tell us where an anonymous, where, where something doesn't look quite right uh, is, is a key. So by collecting as many videos that we've looked at uh, and by, by segregating those by defects so that we can train the AI routine, the algorithm, what to look at, then we can actually use that to automatically find is that a possible issue? Other technologies will find out whether this liner leaks, but we don't want to have to use this, uh, uh, all these other new technologies on 100% of the pipe. We want to kind of get this down to the 20% hot zones that we see something's just not right by looking at a frame by frame basis. Slowing it down sometimes is the best thing possible. And then identifying where those possible areas are to have other technologies that are expertise at finding water loss and, and permeability to get that done. We uh, invite you to send us your videos to help us build our algorithms and others. And, uh, and now we come to kind of a summary. And, and really, I, I do wanna say that, you know, our brains trick us into seeing ourselves and our old habits five times better than we are, really are. I actually don't look as good as, as this. Um, it's actually quite worse. And, and really looking at benchmarking uh, is, is the way to go to really test the AIs that are, do, that are coming up. Uh, and you'll go through the same process that we do when we consult with a number of the folks out there. Here's a good example. I'll just show you these three pages. Manual came up with 27 call outs. Machine came up with 66. So we want to take a look at those. Were there repetitive call outs? that should have been uh, eliminated in the algorithm? Were the call-outs appropriate on either side, either manually or machine? So we take a look at those. Did they get the right call-out? Was that the right visual? By looking at these benchmarks, we're able to fine tune these things, but many of the models are honestly already well past 90% and even getting higher than that. So I'm gonna leave you with the two of my favorite quotes. The first is from Steve Polyak. And it goes like this, before we work on artificial intelligence, why don't we do something about natural stupidity? That's telling us, uh, look, there's a lot of extra care that we need to see as we move forward. The second thing that I'll talk about is uh, Albert Einstein's famous uh, quotation, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results, which is about what we've been doing with the old way of doing CCTV inspection with some pretty difficult results. Well, that's it.
I hope I did, uh, did okay. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a couple of things. Our password to get credit for this course is Snowflake. Please use that. Email me any questions you might have. And again, I thank you very much for attending. Tell your friends.